First of all, I want to wish everyone a happy new year and all the best for 2019. It's currently the 2nd of January, so that means we're going to talk about the December 2018 solar stats of my system here in the UK. Also briefly mention my move to Octopus Energy, as well as my first quarter fit submission to Good Energy. Let's roll the credits. I mean the intro. Okay, so let's start off with a couple of things. So I mentioned in the previous uh, month that I'd moved from Outfox the Market to Octopus Energy. And the reason for that was I wasn't really happy with the customer service. They'd done some really odd things with the direct debit kind of payment schedule stuff that I mentioned in the other video. Um, and Octopus Energy seemed to be pretty good. And they also offer a economy tariff. So on the 10th of January, supposed to be having uh, my new meter installed which enable me to hopefully move to their go tariff and that will give me um, electricity at a third of the cost in between midnight and 4 a.m i think it is or something like that um, and so my plan for that is to do a couple of things one um, put some of that cheap electricity into the power wall so when the weather is crap like it is right now and the power wall if i'm lucky tends to get to around 20 percent ish um then i can just be topping up in the evening or, or when electricity is cheaper up to maybe 70 percent or something so i've still got a bit of buffer and uh, to put some uh, um, electricity from the solar in there and obviously when i hopefully get electric vehicle in the not too distant future and able to do some charging overnight as well um i also have submitted my first feed-in tariff numbers uh, to good energy so i think i mentioned this in uh my video all about understanding the feeding tariff here in the UK. You don't have to stay and do your feeding tariff submissions through your electricity provider. In fact, some electricity providers don't support the feeding tariff, so you can use kind of anyone. Uh, I used Good Energy because Ed, who you know from the channel, um, uses those and in general hasn't had any problems. I would say also in general, I haven't had too many problems. The app seems to be a bit flaky and uh, they say they're, they're gonna update it soon, but when I was trying to do my recent submission, uh, it wasn't working so i had to phone up and submit my uh, readings through an automated phone system also when i joined they wouldn't accept a zero meter reading they said but it can't be that so it send us another one so this was a few days later so my reading started from a, a little bit higher number but that's in the past now um so my um reading that I've submitted to them I calculate I should get something around 112 pounds and 61 pence in the February payment for my Q4 2018 solar import and export um, monies so we'll see what happens if my calculation is correct but um, yeah so that's all good so moving on to the solar so one of the things I was hoping to share I need to do better for next time is I was trying to look at um, both how um, the battery had performed uh, this month. So I was going to try and be proactive and remember to look at the battery and see how much electricity had gone in there this month. Um, but I forgot to do it. Is it's an honest answer? And the Tesla app isn't very good at having any history, so I can't look at last month or last year. So it's also interesting in the yearly stats as well. So I want to see in the last quarter that I've had the battery how much power to actually put in and pull from it but as soon as you clicked over to the first of January all of that December stuff had just vanished uh, and I can't access it so I can't uh, talk about that unfortunately um, so we just focus on the solar um, and I, I did manage to take a picture of the the eddy so I have a bit of stats from that so anyway let's uh, chat about things that you probably aren't interested in so in terms of December solar performance um, as I always say, the installer projected around 230 kilowatt hours of solar generation. My estimate was 180 kilowatts of solar generation. And as previous months, we're kind of somewhere in the middle. So an actual generation of 192 kilowatts uh, is what we had. So that's uh, pretty good. So let's um, share the screen so you can see 
a little bit more detail. So obviously when I say pretty good, uh, it's pretty good in terms of it's in the kind of expected numbers. Obviously I'd like it to be more, but it is what it is. So here we go. So as mentioned before, uh, 192.12 kilowatt hours of electricity generated. I was able to utilize 99% of that. So I'll see majority of it powering the house and a little bit going into the power wall and a, and a minutia going into Eddie. Um, one of the reasons for high electricity usage in December, I'm sure it's similar for most of you. Um, as I mentioned before, here in a cave, I have a two kilowatt heater. I've only had a few days off over Christmas. So uh, you know, in here working majority of the time. So the heater's on, that's obviously consuming a decent amount of electricity throughout the day. Kids and everything are also off over Christmas. That means more TVs are on, PlayStation's on, iPads are charging, all that sort of stuff. And uh, all my cooking is electric. So with more people at home and Christmas meals and everything, just a general large consumption uh, in electricity over December. Um, so obviously the solar, all of this stuff helps to it. So for the whole of December, a whopping 733.06 kilowatt hours of electricity consumed. Obviously 191.06 was produced from the solar, so I had to import 541.99 kilowatt hours. As you can see from the graph, there isn't any really kind of mega standout um, days in terms of usage or in terms of generation. So the 14th and the 17th had some reasonable uh, solar, 15th was like nothing. Uh, so there's a few days here where it was just so completely dark and dismal, nothing was, was happening really. Um, so not super exciting, but let's have a quick um, flick through as we always do. But you can see um, it's just general high usage and very small kind of daylight hour chunks. One thing that I had noticed that I wasn't really aware of before, so I guess just not paid attention, obviously the weather had been better, is with this winter and the low sun, there is a, a period of the day where the neighbor's kind of garage in there, kind of cave um, section, does provide a bit of shadowing to two of my panels on the far left. Um, so it's not significant, but obviously it does impact performance slightly. Um, so it's even more important that I have those um, optimizers to kind of manage that. It doesn't affect the whole string, just those couple of panels. So yeah, if we just quickly flick through, again, you can just see such small chunks of electricity generation and you know, really not uh, too much going on. A couple of days where I think we were out, um, so everything was pretty much taken care of and obviously there was some still power in the, the power which enabled us to get through some of the night, but by the morning, you know, it's starting to have to be um, pulling in again. Apologies for those background beeps. Let's uh, mute it. Um, but yeah, I say we won't go through the whole thing, but the general theme is UK December is pretty dark, dull, dismal and miserable. Um, but the thing that is quite impressive I found is even though the weather is pretty poor, um, on a working day without the, uh, the heater on, which obviously it is on because it's damn cold here, um, but I'm always kind of, when if the sun is out, in some form and pretty much generating around 500 watts at least which is kind of what my house uses um as a general rule with all the computers on and stuff so it's still still pretty good so i am happy um with that so one thing that i will do uh, instead of doing a separate video is kind of now as, as an end of year that i think is quite interesting so again i can't tell you how much went into the battery which is unfortunate um but i can tell you that i did take the picture um of the eddy so this uh, like i said this month only two kilowatt hours somehow trickled in there but since i've had it 193 kilowatt hours electricity has gone from the sun to heating water which is pretty good considering again the, the timing and obviously then i have the, the power wall installed so majority of stuff kind of goes there and the weather's kind of gone downhill but we're after the 21st of december now so it's all uphill that was the shortest day so more and more daylight hours to come um, but I think it's interesting, so if you remember the system was installed at the end of August, so really it's four months worth of data that we have here, um, pretty much. So 1.96 megawatt hours total generation, 
wasn't able to fully consume everything because there was that month and, and a couple of days I didn't have a power wall. So 25% was exported, but 75% I was able to self-consume. And the thing that I think is interesting, which fills me with a lot of hope, is that so the consumption that I've had and the generation I've had in this time works out as kind of bang on 50-50. So I've generated as much as I've had to import. And, and since the, in fact, we've been on this downward curve, my real hope for this system was that overall as a whole annual year I would have generated as much to kind of balance out the import so what I mean by that is just if we use these numbers let's say in a whole year and I know these numbers aren't right but if I need to import two megawatt hours the system would have generated four kilowatt hours right so that would be two two, two megawatts sorry so two megawatts um, would have been used at the time another two megawatts would be kind of like surplus or whatever and then the two megawatts have to import will kind of balance things out so that's kind of my hope that this time next year when we look at this this thing says self-consumption 100 percent or something i'm hoping is kind of how it kind of looks at so we we'll would be interested to see how it works anyway um i think there may be some alterations to that because obviously i'm hoping to get an ev if I can make my mind up and not be frustrated by the various uh, kind of things that exist uh, in terms of the EVs, uh, but obviously will increase my um, electric consumption, which will skew things a little bit, but obviously I won't be buying petrol anymore for that vehicle, similar to the fact that I'm using a lot less gas now for water heating, because in the good uh, daylight days, uh, the Eddy is taking care of that as well. So hopefully, that also mean I can get one of the new uh, Zappies, so that'd be something interesting to review as well. Um, so yes, we'll see what happens next year. I still can't um, make my mind up in terms of what I'm doing about the car. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how the system has performed so far, so no regrets. I'm really looking forward to the days getting longer and sunnier and really putting this uh, system to the test for multiple weeks and weeks and weeks and getting some good output. Thanks for watching this video, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.